uh, rows and joints and so on, you just throw in all the data you have and then try to ask questions on it. <coughs> so it says it does a lot of uh, the nice, nice searching, geospatial searching and so on, but it's uh, quite a bad so. Okay, how does it behave? It's a standalone server, which maintains your, your whole administration. So you address it via HTTP. And uh, you have uh, core processes. <coughs> a, co and, uh, a core process uh, takes care of collection of information, a collection of documents. And uh, you can have uh, those, those cores can be combined on one server or on many server cluster storage. You can have redundant scores and so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a modern database uh, approach. Then you have these, uh, these, these collections, and uh, so each collection has a set of uh, homogeneous set of, of documents. You can specify what kind of fields in those, uh, are in those documents. Um, but uh, usually it's uh, rather sloppy what they design. It's just uh, you can use any field of any type, and, and then you throw all your tables, all your rows as, set, uh, as documents in one collection and try to figure out how, how you get the information. So a document is a flat list of fields. I, I will give you an example. <coughs> so it's uh, connected over HTTP. Then um, you can communicate as a server uh, over HTTP with uh, XML or JSON or Ruby or some other serialization. There are quite a number of serializations. There's no native code serialization. I don't think we need, really need a data dump or, or a storable <laughs> communication format. <coughs> okay, and you pass on a lot of URI parameters. I'll give you an example on the next slide. Uh, besides, it's, it's mainly based on uh, Lucene for the full text searching, but it has a, a lot of plugins and a lot of other uh, uh, libraries from the Apache uh, foundry. For instance, Tika. Tika is um, uh, a library which can convert structural documents into list of fields. So you have a PDF file, it extracts as much metadata and text file from the PDF to be stored in a Lucene database. So there are a lot of uh, components, there are maybe about 30 plugins already uh, for all kinds of uh, uh, Apache and also Java uh, toolsets. So for a full text search, what, what, what does it support? It's not just a regular expression on, on the fields, but you have things like uh, stamming, so uh, taking the stem of a verb, uh, and, uh, synonym, synonyms, uh, aliases, spell checking, highlighting, and so on and so forth. So uh, full text searching is really much more than just uh, a regular expression. The basic concept is this. So you, you have the, your, your server, usually on local host. Uh, this is the the top of your namespace, then you get the name of your collection to be searched, then an action, or just about four or five main actions, uh, and uh, uh, action will be select for search. Then you have this, um, uh, you, can, you have all these parameters in the URI, which say I want to be asked with an XML syntax, or uh, this is my query in the database, and I want to enable highlighting plugin, and I want, uh, if the, the, the pattern you are looking for, I want to have to highlight in the field named content. So there's more than just full text searching, it can also, uh, you have plugins for highlighting. And all, many other things. Um, so just a little, uh, about four or five actions, and then everything is done with these parameters. And now, start making a pro module for this. Think, think. Well, within 10 minutes you have to, uh, a Perl module using LWP, and uh, it works. But if, if you start just, uh, just, if you think that the Perl module is just trying to, to get to this level as fast as possible, then yeah, you're just one of those many Perl modules that uh, uh, are, well, for my feeling, far too low on the protocol. Pro is a very intelligent language. You can make nice object orientation around it. You, I, I really like to have a more, more abstract module, yeah, which hides uh, pro problems that you have on the communication level.
So the, the concept is very simple, and then people start writing modules for it. And you, uh, this one, well, it's, uh, they started it and uh, just had one release five years ago, if I remember well. This is um, a, a bit better module, but each time when I'm looking at CPAN <coughs> for a module to use, I, I'm getting a bit of uh, this, this uh, lack of abstraction. And then I'm always doubting, can I use this as base class and extend it into something some higher level, or can I better just rewrite the whole thing? And usually it's just rewrite the whole thing. <coughs> for instance, I, I usually, when I find such a module, I try to write a, a very small application first, and then you see this, uh, uh, this is how Web Service Solar works. It has a query builder inside, and then you, you pass on the, the query, search query, and some parameters in this way. And now, first thing, I don't like query builders. Uh, they are only easy or simplifying the situation when the queries are very simple. But when the queries grow, the, the syntax of the queries grow and make it become very, very complex, also in this case. And then you get uh, the complication that first you see the documentation of a complex query, then you have to translate this complex <coughs> syntax into the query builder syntax, and then you have to hope that it works. Now, I, I really like to get rid of the, those query builder levels that are just uh, plain, uh, plain query, learn it, read the documentation, how to use the query, and that's all. So that's, when I look at this, uh, the usage of such a module, I see uh, this is direct mapping of the, the previous UI. You see this, uh, this is used to enable the highlighting backend. And then you say, I want to highlight the, the field. So why should we bother the people by uh, explicitly say enable this backend. No? So I want to the, the highlight backend to get this parameter. Just a little bit more of abstraction, a bit more on on the generic level, not to uh, try to hide the protocol. There are many reasons why you would like to rewrite an existing module. <laughs> For instance. Uh, I, I, I don't like to, uh, that I have to specify true and false for booleans explicitly. We have nice booleans in Perl, and true and false meaning in Perl. So uh, why, why should we uh, use these, these strings to pass it up? So my, implementations, uh, my implementation always tries to be to provide Perl types, Perl data types. That means in this case that I have a whole list of all the parameters which are booleans. And before I send up the, the request, I first check for all the booleans and convert it into the text. Hit it. <coughs> uh, now, uh, one of the things I always need is timing and tracing. So you now you have these, you send out these queries, and you want to know how long they take, how, ling, how long they took, and which surf was queried, and, and so on. So uh, there should be some, some tracing information in the library which you take from CPAN, not in your own program. Preferably in the library, which really knows what's doing. So actually, there are so many reasons not to use CIFA. Pr parameter syntax, uh, results, technology, completeness. CIFA is too small, far too small. Mm -hmm. You know, for all these uh, uh, choices, uh, uh, well, uh, multiply them with all the choices you have. There's exponential <coughs> growth. There's so many modules you need to have the perfect module. Let me give me an example of how it works. So this is the XML version of the, the data exchange. Um, add call, update, add. And this is the body of the, the post, the HTTP post. You have the documents and field names. A document is a flat list of fields. And the fields have a name. And one has the name ID, uh, which is just a, a unique key. <coughs> and, um, you can just also provide boost, that means these fields are more important. If I hit the search here, I get bonus points. You can also do that for them. But that's, that's all there is. Yeah? On the level of uh, how, how a document is built. Then, oh, on this, this uh, very ugly URI, or file name in your directory, here's my, my collection. If a, a schema, an XML schema on the server side, which uh, explains what fields there are, which fields there are, uh, how to use these fields, and uh, uh, there are a lot of fields which are, for instance, uh, 
all fields with ends on underscore i are integer fields. And all those kinds of definitions in the schema by default. Uh, but you have to, to configure this to, to make the database opti optimally accessible. And I show you very important uh, things. This is the ID field. If it, uh, a field is stored, so then it uh, uh, means that it can be recalled. The data can be recalled. I want to have highlighted the ID field back, for instance. It can be multi-valued. And it can be indexed. And not indexed means you cannot uh, search here. Uh, this one is stored but not indexed. This one is uh, stored and indexed. So you have all co uh, combinations in there. Next slide should uh, show a little bit more about this. Uh, here you have the, the content field, so that is the, the, the content of my web page, for instance, and I want to be able to, to search it. But it's not indexed, but it's stored, so I can recall it. For instance, for highlighting, I need to be able to recall the page where the text was found. And I have a text field, which is indexed, but not stored. I cannot recall it, but, but I can search in it. It's a typical trick. And this is in the schema. Uh, copy field, all fields named name will be copied into text. So it is stored as name, or well, it's not in this list, but it's stored as name, probably, and indexed via the field named text. So, and here, the contents of my HTML file, it's not indexed by itself, but it's also copied into text, and via text it's indexed. So you search in uh, the agglomerated bunch of, of characters from all kinds of fields together, and you search in there, but then the return will be in these, uh, in, uh, in these stored fields. Yeah? So how does it work? I'm not really used to this, uh, still. Uh, oh, well, this is a small internet so. And to, to create a, a document, uh, so the, you put in documents, you throw in documents into the central server, but you can also, the outsource are also documents. Just in the same way as you, you uh, put in these documents. So you, if you want to create by hand a document, new document, you just add fields, and then you, you send in uh, the documents. I'll show you that on the next slide. Uh, you can also question the documents. Here's the content of the disk field, or uh, with a little trick of auto-loading, you get the uh, underscore. Of course, you, you need to address a lot of the fields in the program, so it's easy to have such a an auto-loading thing. <coughs> this is when you have a, uh, the document is an answer on the query and uh, the unique key, the ID field. So documents are very simple, as you can see. We start using Solar Server. Let's connect to the server, uh, auto-commit all the, the uploads, and I want to communicate in XML, or JSON, or Ruby, or I only support XML and JSON by the moment. This way you add such documents, so very simple, one line, and you can also uh, add other uh, types of documents. Um, Zika, that's the part of Apache, it's built in in the solar server, and they call it solar cell, uh, nice joke, so, uh, it's solar cell, solar cell. But uh, they translate so the PDF into a list of fields, and those fields are inserted in your database. And you add, you have to add a few extra fields yourself, for instance, an ID. Yeah? Because all the documents should have a unique ID. Then, to query it, I query the text field for the text money, and I want this answer highlighted the field description. So you see that uh, all these, and the, the schema defines all these, these content fields, searchable fields, they are all copied into text, in the block text, which is indexed. But the description field is probably only stored, and I can so after it, uh, the, the the pattern is found in uh, the text field, the highlighting module will take the pattern, try to find the pattern in the stored fields, and return that for you. That's a special markup. Excuse me. Some people think, seem to think this is the last talk. It is not. There will be one more talk after this. Uh -huh. Yeah. So after the selection gets results, results object uh, contains information about uh, the, uh, the message exchange, the timing used, and so on, but also how many results you got. And then you can go through these, um, 
the, the list of results. The highlighting is also a document. So I have a document which is matched, as matched, which has some fields. But then I can ask on the result that if I want to have the highlighted fields for that document, which is a document by its own. Okay. <laughs> Reflect it on the screen. Yeah. So, uh, well, this is maybe it. Um, some things are hidden. For instance, if you add the, uh, go to the next document, then um, uh, you, you get the results in pages. You get, uh, by default, only the first 10 results, and then you can ask for the next 10. Minutes. And uh, what I really like from modules is so I have a higher level of, of uh, intelligence inside the pro modules, which uh, not in the program of the app. <coughs> if, if you uh, just ask for a next document all the time, it will automatically fetch the next 10 pages for you if you are addressed outside uh, 0 to 9. So you, you can uh, do it yourself. But it's much nicer if the pro modules go to the level that they do it for uh, all the work for you. Okay, what's uh, negative on uh, the solar? Uh, first, uh, the server installation, it's a mess. Uh, it took me at least three hours to get it up and running. Uh, and it starts, it takes about 10 seconds before it starts, and then on the moment you, you start using one of these collections, it will uh, take another few seconds. This per collection is lazy loading all the, all the <coughs> things. And if you get the server crash, for instance, because you have a, a mistake in your configuration, you get the huge tech traces. And you, you already guess why? It's Java. Yeah. <laughs> Enterprise! <laughs> it's, it's really horrible. I really miss that. Uh, if you, when you get stack trace, I really uh, miss the, the, the parameters you, they passed on every level. I, I tend to change uh, a lot of things at the same time in configuration. I, I change 10 different things. And then it, it just says, oh, one of them went wrong. One of the other complications for solar is that, uh, uh, well, it's an American project, which means that they did, do not think, but just build, and then they change their ideas, and then they just uh, throw away uh, plugins, uh, they change the names of, uh, of parameters to be passed in, and so on, and uh, so it's quite an unstable interface, and the module, my module tries to, to help you a bit, uh, if you, uh, when you start the, uh, the connector, when you start the client, you say what version of the interface you speak, so I had 4.1, and then it warns you if you use parameters which are deprecated or which are not available yet in 4.1. So it tries to help you a little bit in uh, getting it right. And uh, for instance, uh, uh, I experienced uh, differences in XML and JSON messages. That is also one of the reasons to have a nice abstraction in your, in your modules to build that in, to, uh, for instance, abstract away the differences between uh, these, these protocol versions. They are just structurally <coughs> different. They have different people have implemented those. And they, they are documented as being the same, but that's not true. So, uh, you need good regression test for that, to figure that out. Um, what a real usage complication is, and my talk was not about usage, but just more the interface. Um, how do you translate your structured data into the flat document, uh, in the flat list of fields? For instance, uh, I have to search for uh, email messages. So, uh, and email messages have multi-parts, and nested multi-parts, and nested, nested, nested multi-parts, and how do I flatten that out into uh, a document with just a, a list of fields? That's hard. And also the other way around. If you have found data, how can you restructure that into your complex objects in your program? And find that back in the highlighting and so on. That's, that's quite tricky. So there's still a lot to do. Uh, furthermore, what's a little complication is, for instance, for highlighting, that the, the, the default highlighting syntax is all HTML. And there's a lot of HTML or uh, XHTML or XML stuff in these, these protocols. And uh, that's what I really do not... Uh, well, what's, 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 it's a complication, but that's uh, mainly because Solar is that way and not because Pro is that way. Oh, this is uh, one of the nice things. Uh, a very nice graphical maintenance you can just see all the cores you have built and how large they are and when they are used and so on. So that's, this is the positive side. Bling bling. Uh, well, this is nice. 
That's all what I wanted to tell you. So, are there people with questions? Yeah. Have you considered switching to Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch. Uh, no. <laughs> just because um, we chose for solar, and you can just go one and forth. There are so many alternatives. You, you never know which one wins. And on the moment, Elasticsearch is a bit faster for large collections. I read, but tomorrow it's different. Maybe the interface is better. But. Can you add single documents, remove single documents, and the indexing keeps keeps uh, correct? Yeah. yeah. Stays correct immediately. They say that is, yeah, that's always immediately correct. And when it's committed, it's correct. Mm -hmm. What I figured, found out is that, for instance, if I change the schema to make a field uh, required, but I have already documents which have that field not in. It's not complaining. <laughs> so there are still some. Uh, probably you, you, every once in a while you have to rebuild your, your collection. Mm -hmm. But you can do that on a per collection basis. I hate applications. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was your um, biggest point to choose uh, solar? Why not elastic or safety or not a if you read uh, all the, the comparisons between all these versions of database services you have nowadays, then there, there is not really a big difference between them. So yeah, I wanted, <coughs> what was the biggest point of your decision? I, uh, <laughs> it seemed a good choice. <laughs> Can you predict the future? Future? Yeah, future? future? No? No. It will be later than now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's my answer. Maybe. So it, it works, and uh, uh, there are, the, the complaints are not that serious, let's say. But the other ones have also complaints. You just read all the tests and then. No? No one? Okay, next talk.